Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Julie who is going to be an event character coming to RTS as part of a Father's Day event. More information on that to follow but visually well we've never seen a Julie in the way we see her now. I think she was originally part of Survivors Club as a character and I think we might have had a second copy at one point. But visually, as you can see, she's got the hammers. She's kind of following in the footsteps of Tyrese with the hammers. I really like it here. The visuals look really good. She's also kind of like more associated here by the looks of things um, with the prison in terms of the get up. She's got a jumpsuit on, that sort of thing. On the left hand side, we can see the art in a bit more gruesome detail as she is swiftly taking out a walker. <laughs> I love the animation. It's like mid swing. That is brutal. Those hammers would definitely be very, very useful indeed. Um, but yeah, very nice art, very nice visuals. Julie as a fast character by the looks of things as well as two-handed attached weapons. It's going to be very interesting to check those out. As you see, it's a level though, 1,440 limit break three. She has got 35,110 attack, 23,699 defense, and 28,966 HP. She is a fast character. She's going to be a control role. Of course, she's going to be a gold mythic. And she's going to be joining the holiday heroes allegiance like many before her now taking a look at julie's adrenaline rush it is called heroic strike it is a 55 ap cost rush it is make a critical attack against a line of enemies for 300 percent damage each that line of enemies gets a minus 10 ap for each holiday hero on this fighter's team so We'll break this down the 55 ap cost rush is actually pretty fast especially as she does look like more of an attack team character so far she has got higher attack stat this is more of an offensive adrenaline rush she could still be on defense but definitely looks more attack team based so far so 55 is very nice but necessarily need ap on attack on her weapon to get things to happen very quickly this is a guaranteed crit to two enemies up to two enemies should i say if she attacks the top or bottom line it will do a 300% crit to each, and then it will do minus 10 AP after the damage. Remember, when you take damage, you do gain AP on defense team characters and attack team characters. So if they get to full rush, then the AP drain will come in, and it will be minus 10 minimum because she is a holiday hero herself, and then obviously for every other holiday hero you've got. So if you, for instance, use Erica as a lead or Carl as a support character, or you know any of these characters that are holiday heroes with her even someone like Sophia there'll be extra AP drain afterwards minimum of 10 is nice though it would just mean that characters are guaranteed not to rush naturally from being rushed by Julie okay so here we are on an attack team now I have put a defensive weapon in Julie's hands because with an offensive weapon she was hitting a bit too hard so she was taking out the characters and you weren't seeing the AP drain come in there is another holiday hero character in this team. It is East Erica. So what you should see is after the damage comes in, we should see minus 20 AP. Now, there were some changes made where when the AP drain comes in, it actually does the minus 20 AP on the actual character itself. So you should see it on the animation. The attacks will come in. Minus 20 AP. Minus 20 AP. So you'd see Dr. Stevens would be closer to like halfway on his rush and his, his signature move on the next turn we get him his rush for turn um, two naturally. Whereas with this AP down coming in with the adrenaline rush, he's not going to have his rush as quickly. And if he did, let's say, have his rush right now, he'd obviously get 20 drained and still take an extra turn regardless. And you probably noticed there were some other good things going on with that adrenaline rush, basically just incorporated with the special skill and no doubt some passives as well. So we'll look at those in a little bit. But here we'll look at the upgrades on the Adrenaline Rush. You can see at Grade 2 it gets an 150 damage boost. So it goes from 150% damage up to 300% damage. Then at Grade 4 it gets an AP cost reduction to 55. So initially it should be 66. But it's only one copy to get this. Not too bad at all. Limit Break 1 gets the upgrade where that line of enemies gets minus 5 AP for each Holiday Hero on this fighter's team. And then at LB3, Limit Break 3... That's going to be an additional minus 5 AP per holiday hero character, making it minus 10 per holiday hero character overall, which is going to be a minimum of 10, just like I said before, because Julie is a holiday hero. 
Now, I did use a defensive weapon in her hands before, so she wasn't hitting as hard as I could have, and it was just so you could see the animation of the AP drain come in, you know, and just see that how it basically worked there. I think most people kind of understand how AP drain works, but with the new animation I'm actually showing, it's actually kind of cool to see, so you can see it in action. Um, now, she does have other parts of her kit which are going to be incorporated into this. This is guaranteed critical attacks. Also, when we look at that specialist skill later on, you'll know that it isn't just going to be activating that specialist skill, but she's also going to be taking into advantage the first half of it, kind of like Rosita did in the past. Again, we'll look a bit into that later, but it is a very nice combination. It means you're going to have less issues with weapons on defense teams for sure. So quite a nice rush. You can beef this damage up quite nicely as well with the faction assault weapon. It means you can bypass things like defense and get extra damage based on the HP. But she has got an attached weapon and we'll see what that's like later on in the video as well. But that's at least a good backup if you wanted to straight away use a heavy damage dealing weapon for Julie. So like I say, quite a nice rush. Should do pretty decent damage and it's got a little bit of control in there as well. Now next up, Julie has got a signature move of course. And it is called Blunt Blows. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one. Cooldown of two turns, number of uses unlimited. If the target has more defense than this fighter, that enemy gets minus 50% defense for one turn. Make four attacks for 200% damage against an enemy, 800% total. So obviously, two halves of this. It will go off first turn, but two halves of this. The, if the target has more defense than this fighter, they get minus 50% defense for one turn. This primarily promotes her as being an attack team character. I think she has around about 24,000 defense on attack. That's decent for an attack team, actually. And if you used her on a defense team, most you know big damage dealers are not going to have more than her. However, most defense team characters are almost definitely going to have more than 24,000 defense. So they should always do minus 50% defense. And then four attacks are going to come in regardless. This is going to happen no matter what. Where four attacks will come in, doing 800%. Each of these individual attacks can crit, take into account her weapon effects, so on and so forth. And if she does manage to take out a character with the first hit, the set next hit would go on to someone else, so on and so forth. So this could do pretty drastic damage, could be good in raids could be good in war could be good even in something like faction assault in terms of just getting off lots of hits and again using the right weapon you should get some nice big multipliers okay so here we are attacking again and this time i'm going to use the signature move i'm going to attack alice and alice's defense is higher than julie's so she should get the minus 50 percent defense this will make the initial hits much higher on alice then she'll move on to another character if she doesn't take out alice and do probably less damage on those hits so we'll see the signature move come in you can see you saw the minus 50 percent defense but you're also seeing big hits come in she's managed to take out two and then another hit comes in now it's not going to be as powerful as this potentially when um, you're coming up against a fully fledged defense team but obviously your Julie's going to have characters around with 1535s maybe an attack buff on her if you have her in the right team like with akira or something like that she could get a massive buff off of, off of turn one, honestly. So she can be hitting really, really hard. She's not going to run into any weapon issues. She could also utilize other weapons out there. Like I think there was a ransack fast weapon at one point, and she could definitely hold on to that. So there are definitely some options for Julie in attack teams. Now, looking at the upgrades here on the signature move, you can see at grade three, it gets plus two attacks. At grade five, it gets an upgrade where if the target has more defense than this fighter, that enemy gets minus 50% defense for one turn. And at LB2, it gets minus one to starting cooldown. So it goes from a turn two starting cooldown down to a turn one starting cooldown. This one would be probably quite important. Just to, so obviously doing it as early on in the fight as possible. The earlier you do this signature move, the earlier you can do it again as well. So it isn't just buffing the, uh, the initial cooldown. It is also buffing the second attack as well. Um, the other ones aren't too hard to come by just because of how many copies you need, but you do need four copies for the LB2 upgrade. Now, I will say this signature move has pretty significant potential for sure, especially if teamed up with the right characters. You could team up with like Heng Yen. Heng Yen takes out characters that have you know, the counter damage potential, and then Julie can take out other characters that are kind of remaining. Um, very nice kind of output in terms of the damage, in my opinion. And like I say, weapon potential's there. She's got quite a few weapons that she can utilize. If you do want to buff that damage, 
you can go for the faction assault weapon and if you want to maybe go for more of a support style you could go for something like the ransack weapon that was around at one point as well each of these hits can crit they can all individually proc her special skill and they can all individually proc her weapon as well i also noticed in the last clip her stance in the actual fight looks a lot like a very og version of Tyrese, where it's called Double Axe Tyrese. This is like Double Hammer Julie. The stance is pretty much identical. I love it. Now, Julie, of course, has some mythic abilities. These are going to be her passive skills. Now, because she is a control role character, she will have precision where enemy resistances are 40% lower against this character. So far, it's only affecting the AP drain that she has on her adrenaline rush. So nothing spectacular there, but it also affects her specialist skill which we'll look at a little bit later. Spread across when performing a critical attack, 80% chance to spread one negative status effect to an adjacent enemy for one turn. This does not include infection, but it does include things like burn and bleed, which have kind of had a resurgence recently. So you could potentially spread those around. Remember, bleed does stack. So even if you have bled the entire team, you can potentially spread it to a, you know, a teammate again and get them to bleed more. Um, and then obviously the stun, confuse, all these things work as well. When it does get spread, that that effect will only last for one turn. But you can have characters that can have extensions. So for instance, someone like Raulito, I think, has it built into his kit. You can just extend the spread that Julie does. So there is definitely some nice synergy there. The next passive is called Pain Intake. When attacking, this fighter heals for 100% of the damage they deal. This is basically, in my opinion, how the combat mod Leech Life should work. Now, I can't even remember if it's actually called Leech Life because I don't think I've ever really used it. That might actually be the weapon upgrade, but it might be Life Steal. Life Steal doesn't proc every time, I don't think, or it just procs and it does very limited amount of heal. This is actually gonna be very, very nice indeed. 100% of the damage, so if she hits for 25,000, She's getting healed for 25,000. That is actually much better than what we have currently in the game. It's like a vampiric kind of style, which is actually something that is very well known in these sort of games, is to have a heavy lifesteal build, and RTS has never really had that. Next and last on the passives is called Thinning Shields. When performing a critical attack, remove 70% of the targets and all adjacent enemies' current bonus HP. This is actually kind of nuts. Because if you think about it, if you attack the leader on a team and they have 100% of their bonus HP and you do it with their signature move, the first move will do minus 70% and then the second move will do minus 70% again and then minus 70% and then minus 70%. In the end, they'll have less than 5,000 bonus HP if she crits all of those basic, if she crits all of those hits on her signature move on the leader character. The entire team will have that done as well kind of interesting in the way she works she is kind of built for crit as well because of how the rest of her kit works so this is gonna be very interesting indeed so as we see we come up against the team that has all got a hundred percent of their bonus HP I'm gonna do the signature move on the leader character watch how the bonus HP will be reduced by the character that I attack and adjacent teammates. Now, if I manage to take out um, Pamela here, it will obviously go to onto another character to just work out which characters are adjacent to that one. It is worth noting, again, I have put more of a defensive weapon in her hands. I've put just a crit weapon in her hands, so she's not going to be doing as much damage. And you're going to see the attacks come in. 70% reduction, 70% again, 70% again, 70% again. So as you can see, the adjacent enemies have got extremely, extremely low bonus HP. Where they would normally have 100%, they're down to like 5 or 10 max. So this is really nice. Obviously the target will have no bonus HP because I will be attacking that as well as doing the reduction. So yeah, it's more about the adjacent teammates. And it's good because no matter how many attacks you do, they always have a little bit of bonus HP. This means her synergy with someone like Sophia will be really good because even if someone's got one bonus HP, Sophia gets a massive attack boost with her, her kit because of how it works. So it's good that characters still have a little bit of bonus HP, but not completely wiped out. But the lower the better means that she doesn't have to do as much damage to take them down. 
You might have noticed as well the defense down from her signature move did actually spread across to someone else. It went on to Nor, and this is because of the effectively the pain spread potential that she has in her passives as well. So it'll be more characters getting defense down, potential for turn one, making it again just more easy to take defense team characters down with other characters. Very nice indeed. You could build her more support base like I kind of did in that one, not aiming to get takedowns. I could have finished off Pamela with, like I say, Sophia. And Sophia's got a free takedown on the line of her choice at that point, pretty much. Now, if we look at the upgrades here on Julie's passives, you can see at grade one, she gets the first half of spread across. When performing a critical attack, she has a 40% chance to spread one negative status effect for an adjacent enemy for one turn, does not include infection. At grade two, she gets the first half of precision, making enemy resistances 20% lower against this fighter. At grade three, she gets spread across two, making 80% chance to spread a negative effect to an adjacent enemy for one turn, again, does not include infection. Moving on to grades four and five, we have pain intake part one at grade four. When attacking, this fighter heals for 50% of damage they deal. Now, we didn't see the heals in action so much here, but obviously she would heal if she had been focused at all early on in the fight. Off of turn one, that's not gonna be too much of a problem, generally speaking because she should be at max HP. And then at grade five, you're gonna see the first half of thinning shields come in. When performing a critical attack, remove 35% of the targets and all adjacent enemies current bonus HP. I like that the grade five upgrade here is gonna still reduce bonus HP. It isn't gonna just have a chance to reduce it by 70%, it's gonna reduce 35%. So it's still gonna be quite effective even at grade five. However, some of these things get more effective as we move into Limit Breaks with Precision 2 coming in at Limit Break 1, making it 40% lower against this character with the resistances. At Limit Break 2, Pain Intake 2 comes in. When attacking this fighter heals for another 50% damage they deal, and hit 100% damage they deal. And this includes crit damage as well. So again, like I said, if she hits for 55k, she's healing for 55k. It's a shame she hasn't got any kind of like overheal potential, but it's still very nice. Um, thinning Shields 2 comes in. At limit break three, when performing a critical attack, remove 35% of the target and all adjacent enemies' current bonus HP, and this stacks with Dinning Shields Part 1, making it 70% total. But like I said, if you only get the character up to grade five, or let, let's say limit break two, where you can get the, the best out of the signature move, you're still going to get quite a good boost on Thinning Shields here. Thinning Shields Part 2, though, obviously makes it a lot better. I don't normally like the reduction of bonus HP not to be 100%, but because there are characters out there that actually get massive bonuses, like Sophia, on characters that have even, like I say, one bonus HP, and there'll always be bonus HP on a character that Julie will attack. No matter how many times she attacks, 70% reduction will always leave something. She's gonna basically be setting up her more like powerful teammates to do significant damage now. Because if you've got, let's say, a Peacekeeper, that has 200k base and 200k bonus HP, after those four hits, Peacekeeper's bonus HP will go down to like 20k, 15k, something like that. And then basically, it means that now Sophia only has to hit for 220k rather than 400k. And she can do that with ease against a tough character with a slither of bonus HP. So the, the, like I say, the synergy between those two characters looks pretty good. They're both holiday heroes as well. And Julie would get a slight bonus on her rush because of that. So indeed, very good passives. The only one that looks kind of out of place would maybe be pain intake. It doesn't seem massively important. You don't necessarily have to max this out. You could actually bring this up to like 9 out of 20 and still get just a bit of HP back because you don't really need to heal for like 75, 80k HP. You could just heal for like 15, 20 and that's going to be just as good. Now, Julie, of course, has a specialist skill. Now, while it is a single specialist skill known as disarming, it actually has two parts to it. The part that a lot of people know that if you hit a critical attack, that enemy will obviously be disarmed. Their weapon will no longer function when other enemies attack that character. The thing that's actually really cool, and it's the way it works with Rosita as well, the way it works with all disarming specialists, but it is actually really nice, is this fighter will never trigger a special or epic weapon effect that activates when an enemy fighter is defending. This is really good because there are characters with massive reflect out there on their weapons. And there are characters with obviously 60% stun and 
60% absolute defense. Julie will never prop these, ever, as her individual attacks, whether she crits or not. The crit will mean that it doesn't work on the third slot for other people. You can never disarm the fourth slot, but Julie will never be affected by the fourth slot. So she's kind of unique. The only other way to get past it is if you stun the defense team character, but they can get buffed with that on their mods. Or if you have a character that deals damage rather than actually attacks, you know, attack based synergy move or attack based rush. If it deals damage, it'll obviously bypass weapons, but it can't crit, so there is downsides to that. Julie can set up people who can crit to have no issues with weapons, which generally is nice. And at the very minimum, it's gonna be nice for Julie herself. Now I've been hiding it a little bit in this video. She has got a quite a nice weapon here and it's called Julie's Savage Jewel Hammers. They look cool, the stance is cool, I love it. 40% attack, a huge bonus to AP when attacking. In the third slot it has improved bonus attack, 45% attack when attacking enemies with more than 35% HP. And in the last slot it has improved critical expert. Turns fighters base crit chance to 100% Plus, this fighter will get 20% crit damage. Now, the third slot is the same as the Faction Assault Weapon. So you're going to get a very nice bonus here. You're not going to get the bypass defense on the fourth slot. However, you are going to get 100% chance to crit on that signature move, which is quite important as well, just because that's four separate attacks. You won't have to build her for crit in her mods. You can build her for crit multiplier to get more damage, but you don't have to build crit chance. And that also... The lack of 1535 is not going to be as big a problem because, you know, she's got 100% crit chance here. Now, the last part is nice because it kind of counters the fact that she's a control role character where you'd probably be hoping she was a damage role character where she'd get agility in her passes to get bonus attack with each individual hit. She'll still get this, but not as high. It will just be boosting the crit damage by 20% rather than her base damage by 20% which would obviously be much more effective but it's still going to be a boost it does stack with the combat mods so if you went with critical multiplier mods and critical multiplier set you would still get this bonus on top and it would all stack together so giving you a nice high number as well crit multiplier and getting that crit damage up as high as possible definitely like, seems like the way to go and boosting this weapon to 55% attack is pretty great if you wanted to use the faction assault weapon in her hands, you definitely could, but you could potentially, like I say, team up with another character like Heng Yen, and he could utilize that weapon, while Julie just utilizes her attached weapons that are gonna be very, very effective for her kit. So this was Julie, or Double Hammer Julie, <laughs> as she's gonna be known for me. Uh, I really like the stance, I really like the visuals, she looks really cool, and her kit looks actually pretty solid, and I think she's gonna have some really nice synergy with characters that are part of the Hell of the Heroes and the characters that aren't. But I think the team up with Sophia, where she's going to basically be reducing that bonus HP, but still leaving a sliver just so Sophia can come in and absolutely wreck the line of characters. I like the potential here. Julie here looks really fierce. And as there's a Father's Day event coming with Julie, well, there should be a father coming around the corner as well. Stay tuned for that one, guys. But leave your thoughts about Julie in the comments down below. That is the end of this video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving. <laughs>